Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am sitting in the parking lot, kind of far from Rogers. Whatever time of day it is, and I don't even know. Well, I know it's afternoon, 2.20. That's why I'm hungry. <laughs> the sun is not in a good position, so I had to come to the church to be able to park. So once again, if I burst in flames, it's because I am within a few feet of a Catholic church. <laughs> I won't start talking about that, so just chill. I don't really have too much to talk about, so let me at least show you what I got. We'll start with the treat I bought for my mother. I like to always go home with something, and these are just little bags of candy, two for a dollar. I got jelly beans, and I got gumdrops, and I'll just mix those in a little jar, and she'll be all happy camper about that. Got a gallon of milk that I'm... Jeez, what is with the stray hair coming off my head ball? <laughs> I got a gallon of milk. I'm going to show you the gallon of milk. But I will show you the haddock. And I think I'm going to have some haddock for lunch. I got two nice big pieces of haddock, which is a white fish flaky. Absolutely love it. $6.99 a pound, as always. I paid $5.63 for this one, and $5.80 for this one. I will be cooking one of the fillets. I'll take the smaller one, having that with my steak, surf and turf. The other one, my mother will cut it into pieces. She likes to wash it, cut it into pieces, and I will freeze that for her. I'm sure she'll have one later today, and then freeze the other. Then I just picked up some more of the top round at $2.89 per pound. And I saw their flyer for next week, and these are the same that are going to be on sale next week. So there won't be a chuck sale. So I have to look and see if I can possibly get chuck sale at Hannaford because I love chuck steak. And I'm running out. I think I have only two of those left. And now I have top round, but I didn't have to buy a ton. I think I picked up five because it'll be on sale again next week. When I get home, after I upload this, after I eat, I want to finish the mini crazy quilt. It is quite small. I want to try maybe something different with how I back it. I don't know yet. I still don't know, but I have to decide because I want to be doing that in a matter of a couple of hours. I am planning on using batting, and I would like to put that on eBay after as a pet blanket or a pet bed, depending on how much I stuff it. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, so I really shouldn't get ahead of myself. But it's quite small, and I think it would be awesome as a pet blanket for either a dog or a cat, or it would be great to give to a child who has a doll, and it could be a blankie for their doll. Do kids still play with dolls? I was big into dolls. I loved my dolls. I dressed them. I put blankets on them. I don't remember having a lot of dolls. Did I even have a doll? <laughs> Maybe I just imagined that I had a doll. It was my imaginary doll. <laughs> no, I know I had a baby doll. <sighs> I don't know. I had to have, right? I must have been at least given a doll as a child. I know I had a doll because I used to actually push it around in the baby carriage. That was my baby carriage. Remember baby carriages? Oh my god. I mean, they were like big, bulky, actual carriages that you put a child in to lay down in. You know, now it's just all, oh my god, why am I talking about this? I don't even know what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm having false memories. <laughs> I'm sure I had a doll, but I don't have it anymore. I know I had never a Barbie doll, but I had like the imitation Barbie, you know, the knockoff. And I did have um, a baby first step. I remember having a baby first step, and that still exists somewhere in my house, but she can't take a step because her foot broke off. I don't know how that happened, but she has a broken foot. And I also had a ballerina-type doll that you pulled or pushed something on the head, and she would turn, and you could, like, make different positions. 
probably got that like when I was in dance class when I was like six or seven and I don't quite remember her name but I I know those were for real but they weren't baby dolls that I could play with I just had them I remember begging for the the um ballerina one I just wanted that so bad when I had something I absolutely cherished it cherished it took care of it played with it all the time except for the broken foot <laughs> But I didn't take toys for granted. I didn't have many of them, and what I had, I used always and just really loved it. Now you can give a kid a toy, and, you know, within a day, they're done. It's done with that one. Let's move on to the next toy. But not when I was a kid, and um, I'm sure not when most of you watching were kids either. I think we're from a generation that we didn't have a whole lot, and we certainly appreciated the toys that we had. And we learned to play with things that weren't even toys. You know, you could give me a wooden spoon, and I would somehow turn it into a toy. I don't know. I guess I don't have much to talk about because we're talking about ridiculous things. So I want to finish the quilt today. I really want to do another Would You Rather. I've got that on my short list. I'm anxious to find one with harder questions. I just thought it was fun to do the first one. And I'm anxious to do more of that. I know I have let some series like drop off the face of the earth. It doesn't mean that I'm not going back to them. It just means that I'm having a hard time like with upcycled fashions. I just, you know, I go through stages where I feel so creative and then I go through stages where it's like, like, do I even know how to sew? I, you know, I just, I don't know. I lose my creativity, but it comes back. For instance, I was, you know, totally addicted for quite a while to making paper beads. I was putting them on eBay at the first of every month. And then after Skylar left, I just kind of like went into a funk and I didn't make any. And last night was the first time in a little over two months that I made some paper beads. Nothing special, but I just felt like rolling paper beads. So I'm glad that I'll probably be getting back into that. I don't know if I'll be selling little sets of paper beads on eBay, but I certainly need to get rid of paper beads if I'm going back to that addiction. So I thought I could do a hundred mixed beads like I was doing or even like smaller ones of mixed beads like 50 or whatever. So you can expect beads at some point to resurface because I am suddenly back in the mood to make that. So what I'm saying is my love for things does come back. It just, they take a break for a while and then they come back. The other thing that I'm struggling with is embellishing those quilt blocks. Both upcycle fashions and the quilt blocks, they are things that I love to do and I would love to do them, but the thing is is that they're very time consuming, especially, especially the upcycled fashions. So it's like, I think, oh, I'd love to do that, but I need a video quick, so I'm going to do this instead. Just makes it hard to balance it all. The sun is frigging hot on my face. Don't like, don't like the sun. I don't like the feeling of it on my skin. I don't like the heat of it. <sighs> I can always find so many things to complain about. I don't actually even see it as complaining. I just see it as my truth. <laughs> I wonder if doors are still open to churches. I would tend to think not. When I was a kid, you could always walk into the church because you might want to just stop by and pray a little. I would think now, though, that they'd be afraid of vandalism and stuff. There's some windows open. Should we go try the door? Would that be weird? What if somebody's in there? They might think I want help. <laughs> because you could go into a church, at least my old St. Ignatius church. I mean, you could go in and there'd be absolutely no priest or anything. I mean, there might be somebody else praying somewhere, but you could just sit and think or do whatever you wanted. But it would be foolish to leave doors open now if the church is completely unattended. I would think that people could go in there and just be vandals or... I don't know, I'm very curious. I think we have to go inside the church if it's open. Let's pull up closer. Don't fall! <laughs> I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be pulling up like all of like 10 feet. 
What a long ride I just took you on. We're here. <laughs> I feel like a tourist. This is the church. 1959 is the date, and I was born in 60. And I know I've mentioned before that even though this church is in the town I lived in, it wasn't our parish. So I only was ever in this church a handful of times in my life. Let's see. So happy it's locked. <laughs> yeah, it's completely empty and quiet. Well, let's try this door. Oh, a big bug. I did not like. Of course, all doors are going to be locked. They're not stupid. Okay, let's go back to the car. I was quite sure it would be locked. If the door was open, I would have taken you in, but that part scared me because I had a feeling if it's open that somebody would be in there. And I just didn't feel like having to explain to someone that I was just taking the peanut gallery into a church. <laughs> I guess I should go home because I feel scattered and I'm kind of hungry and I'm excited to just go finish the little quilt so I can get that off my plate and you know, think of other things to do. I do appreciate very much that you hung out with me in my car for a little bit. Got close to taking you inside a church. I'll have to look for places to go into. So that would be kind of fun, just to go into places where I don't belong. <laughs> I will be back with more soon. Please subscribe. Just because that's what we say. <laughs> And I don't know why. Does anybody really have to be reminded to subscribe? If you like a channel, just subscribe to it. Subscribe if you want. Bye!